Today's lesson is called Facts About Viruses. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. My name is Roger, and today we're going to talk about germs, but、uh, more specifically, we're going to talk about viruses. I guess germs include things like bacteria and viruses, but we'd like to be more specific and talk about viruses today, especially consider what has been going on in the world with that new nasty virus that's going around. Oh, you mean the coronavirus? Yeah, if you haven't been living in a cave or under a rock. You have heard all about the newest virus on the scene, COVID-19, or this novel coronavirus, in late 2019 or early 2020. Anyways, if the coronavirus has gotten you curious, you guys are in luck because today and the day after today, we are going to be learning all about viruses. Yes, our lesson is titled "Facts About." Viruses. All right, everyone. With that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. Don't fret. When we come back, we are going to be learning all about viruses. Facts about viruses. Some viruses are deadly. Others are harmless. But for many, just the word itself can raise fear. To give you a more objective understanding of viruses, here are some facts. 大家好，标题中我们看到单字 virus 这个字是名词，意思是病毒。例如 ，I caught a virus from my cousin who was sick last week。我从我上个礼拜生病的堂弟那边感染到病毒了。另外，补充这个字的形容词 viral，v i r a l，viral 指病毒的，病毒引起的。像是 ，The doctor said I've caught a viral flu。医生说我得了病毒性感冒。再补充一个相关片语 ，go viral， 表示在网络上广为流传、爆红。举例来说 ，My YouTube video went viral after it was shared by a celebrity on Twitter。我的 YouTube 影片被一个名人在 Twitter 上分享后疯传。Okay, we're all concerned about viruses. They can float around. We can get contaminated and infected, and we could get sick and maybe even die. So, of course, we're all worried and concerned about viruses. So, the more we know about them, the more we can prepare for when they come. So, yes, we're going to give you some facts that we know about viruses. And here in the first part, it says some viruses are deadly; others are harmless. Phew! That's a relief. I think、uh, most of the time when we hear the word virus, we think, "Oh, they're all going to kill us." Viruses are bad, no matter what they are. But、uh, only some viruses can actually kill you, and others won't actually harm you. You probably don't want them to go into your body anyway. But Yeah, some are harmless, but some other ones are deadly, which means they cause death. Yes, if something is deadly, it could kill you. Like the cobra is a deadly type of snake. You don't want to get bitten by a cobra. You might just end up dead because these cobras, yeah, they're a deadly type of snake. That much is for certain. Now, for the most part, okay, we are surrounded by other living things. Okay, there's bacteria floating around, fungus in, in the form of spores floating around, viruses everywhere. They're around us all the time. They're on the surface of our bodies at all times. We can't avoid them. Okay. But not all of these things are deadly all of the time. In fact, most of these things are harmless most of the time. Every once in a while, though, one of these things becomes deadly. Now, let's have a small discussion right now, okay? Sometimes when people get sick, they get the common cold. Let's say they go and they see a doctor and they say, "I want antibiotics," and the doctor says, "Fine, there you go. There are some antibiotics for you." But then. 
that's it. The doctor doesn't say, yes, the antibiotics will help to kill this common cold that you've contracted. Why? Because the common cold is a viral infection. It comes from a virus. It doesn't come from any bacteria. So an antibiotic is not going to help you. If you get a cold, the best thing you would do is to rest and stay hydrated, and you'll be good in a few days. Antibiotics will not help at all. Why? Because antibiotics treat diseases that come from bacteria, and viruses and bacteria are two totally different things. Yeah, viruses are actually much smaller, and they're not really living things, whereas bacteria are living things. They have their own DNA and stuff like that, so there is an important difference there. But uh, yeah, lots of people, when they hear just the word virus, it can raise fear. Maybe not as much as the word cancer. If your doctor says, I'm sorry, but you've got cancer, that could probably sound very, very scary. But still, if the doctor says you have a virus or something, you're still going to be scared when you hear that. So it can raise fear. It can make you afraid. And to give you a more objective understanding of viruses, here are some facts. Okay, so we're going to try to give you some objective understanding of viruses. Objective means it's not biased. We're not telling you stuff because we have some political agenda or something like that. We're trying to be as objective and fair as possible. Yeah, the opposite of objective is subjective. If we're talking about a subjective feeling, we're talking about the way a person feels, okay? If you feel some way, though, that doesn't mean that you can be certain of something, okay? Let's say you feel deep in your bones that your doctor has to give you some antibiotics. The doctor might say, I've got to be objective with you right now. I know how you feel, but antibiotics are not going to help you. You have a viral infection. So instead of being afraid and worried and letting these feelings inform our thoughts and stuff like that, let's go ahead, be reasonable, scientific, and objective. So yeah, here are some facts, folks. We're going to help you guys develop an objective understanding of viruses. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break, but don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Are viruses alive? For a while, this question was a topic of debate, but today scientists don't consider viruses to be alive. The reason is that viruses don't have cells, nor can they turn food into energy. However, viruses have genes and the ability to reproduce with the aid of a host, so one could also argue that they're in some way living organisms. Many organisms are too small to be seen without a microscope. 许多生物体的体型太小,得用显微镜才看得到。或是, human beings are very complex organisms that scientists still don't fully understand. 人类是非常复杂的有机体,科学家仍然无法完全搞懂。另外补充这个字的形容词, organic, O-R-G-A-N-I-C, organic, 植有机的,生物的。我们可以说, some people only eat vegetables that are grown at organic farms. Okay, so first of all, here's the big question. What are viruses and are viruses alive? Are they actually living things? Are they actually living organisms? Well, for a while, this question was a topic of debate, but today, scientists don't consider viruses to be alive. So they don't think they're alive, although they kind of act like they're alive. They kind of act like they have minds of their own, like they're trying to attack us or something for some particular reason. But uh, that's basically the answer to this question. No, they are not alive. Scientists don't think they are actually living. Yeah, viruses are really small, and they only contain like a packet. And in that packet, there's like some genetic material. That's it. Now, when I say a packet, do I mean like a plastic bag or something like that? 
No, of course not. But they don't actually have like cell walls and stuff like that. Like a bacteria compared to a virus is going to be quite large. And inside that bacteria, there are things that do things for that particular cell. There's a nucleus and stuff like that. It actually looks like it's a lie. Further, bacteria, they actually eat stuff, whereas viruses do not. And that's one of the reasons why scientists these days don't really consider viruses to be alive. Yeah, the reason is that viruses don't have cells, nor can they turn food into energy. There you go. However, though, viruses have genes and the ability to reproduce with the aid of a host. So one could argue that they're in some way living organisms. So, hmm, the virus, it doesn't eat, but it does have the capacity to hijack your cellular reproduction system there, I should say, in your body. So in that way, are they alive? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, the discussion kind of gets tough at this point, kind of tricky at this point. Right. So again, we're debating whether viruses are alive or not. But here we've got this double negative pattern, the neither nor pattern. They don't have cells, nor can they turn food into energy. I'm so poor, I don't have a car, nor do I have a motorcycle. But again, viruses do have genes and they can reproduce. They can make more of themselves with the help of a host. So yeah, they do need to get into your body somehow so that they can can reproduce. That、uh, kind of tells me they're sort of alive. There, they have some sort of a ulterior motive. They want to reproduce and stuff like that. But、uh, yeah, so some people could also argue that they're in some way living organisms. So an organism, basically, is something that lives, right?、Mm, yeah, an organism. But the first thing I think is, hmm, organism. That means you've got organs, like. Human beings, the heart, the lungs, the liver, the brain—these are all organs. They all work together to make sure that someone can live. Even cells can be said to have organs, smaller things inside of that cell that allow for this particular bacteria, let's say, to be alive. Okay, that's why we can call it an organism, let's say. But with a virus. It's not so clear. Do they really have organs? It sounds like they only have a bit of genetic material and the ability, for one reason or another, to hijack another organism's, or I should say, an organism's, their cellular reproduction capacity. So they don't eat; they only live to reproduce themselves. Does that really constitute living? I don't know for sure. All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. When we come back, we'll be wrapping up day one of our article. On viruses. How viruses spread. The way viruses spread depends on their type. Some travel in the mist that flies from a person's mouth or nose when they cough or sneeze. Others are carried by mosquitoes or birds. The dengue virus, which can be transmitted to people through a mosquito bite, is one example. Still others can jump between species. The H1N1 virus, for instance. Causes swine flu, which humans can catch from pigs. The same situation applies to SARS-CoV-2, the virus behind the recent COVID-19 outbreak. Many experts believe COVID-19 might have begun in a seafood wholesale market that also sold live wild animals. The third part, we see a word transmit. This word is a verb. 指传染、传播疾病、传送。举例来说 ，If a pregnant woman has the disease, she may transmit it to her baby. 若孕妇得了这项疾病，她也许会传染给她的宝宝。或是 ，The radio station transmitted a message to the other side of the world. 无线电台把讯息传送到世界的另一端。另外，补充一个相关片语 ，pass along， 表示传递、传达。我们可以说 ，Sean isn't here at the moment. But I'll pass along your message to him. Sean 目前不在，但我会把你的讯息传给他。再来，我们看到一个名词 swine， 意思是猪，像是 swine flu 就表示猪流感。例如 ，What are the symptoms when a human catches swine flu? 人类得到猪流感的症状是什么？最后，我们看到片语 apply to somebody or something， 表示适用于点点点。我们可以说。Many of the school rules apply to both teachers and students. 
学校的许多校规同时适用于老师及学生，或是 I'm not sure if the arrangement applies to your situation. 我不确定这个安排是否适用于你的状况。另外，补充这个片语的其他用法：第一 ，apply A to B， 表示将 A 应用于 B， 将 A 涂抹于 B。例如 ，Karen doesn't know how to apply what she learned in college to her work. Karen 不知道如何把大学所学的知识应用在工作上。或是 the workers applied a special paint to the metal fence to keep it from rusting. 工人们将一种特别的漆涂在金属围栏，防止它生锈。第二 apply 可表示申请、请求，之后可接 to 加单位或 for 加职位，像是 Mana applied to the company for a position in the marketing department. Mana 向这间公司申请行销部门的职位。All right. Here we're going to talk about how viruses spread. We don't like that viruses can cause trouble, so we want to stop their spread, stop them from getting around and moving out in all directions. The way viruses spread depends on their type. Okay, different kinds of viruses spread in different ways. So it depends on something. You need to look at something and consider its individual characteristics before you can determine the answer. There you go. The way viruses spread depends on their type. Some travel in the mist that flies from a person's mouth or nose when they cough or sneeze. Now, before we said that sometimes viruses or bacteria they kind of float around in the air. That's not really true. Okay, bacteria and viruses both they need kind of a host, a way of living. Okay, or a place where they can live and either reproduce themselves or get sustenance or something like that. They don't float around in the air, but they can travel from you to another person if you sneeze or cough. Because when you do that, little bits of spittle and stuff like that, they form a mist that can carry these viruses from you to someone else. Right. So coughing, of course, is <coughs> and sneezing is a chew. Either one of those actions spreads viruses out into the air. Air, and you might be unfortunate and breathe those in. That's why face masks or surgical masks are very helpful in that they help stop the spread of viruses when someone coughs or when they sneeze. Now, others, other kinds of viruses, are carried by mosquitoes or birds. So you've got to watch out for them. Mosquitoes, of course, are kinds of insects, and of course, they can bite an infected person and then carry that virus. Virus from that infected person to you when they bite you. So yes, they can carry those viruses. Birds can do that too. Watch out for bird poop. I think they were warning us about、uh, avian flu a while back. There, stay away from fresh bird poop. It could be contaminated with viruses there. So indeed, they can be transmitted that way. One example of this is the dengue virus, which can be transmitted to people through a mosquito bite. Again, that is one example. Dengue is how you say that in Chinese. Dengue fever is the disease, but it's caused by the dengue virus. There you go. The virus is what causes the fever, the disease, the symptoms, so on and so forth. And apparently, this can be transmitted to people through a mosquito bite. Maybe that disease is in your blood and not in your spit or something like that. Well. That means it's going to stay in your body, and that's that, right? That disease is going to stick there or stay there until you kill it, right? Not exactly. Maybe a mosquito bites you and drinks some of your blood, and then, oh no, that person, that same mosquito bites someone else later on. Maybe that mosquito, I should say, is going to transmit that disease in that way. They're going to move from person to the other. In that way, they'll be transmitting the disease. Now, still others, still other viruses can jump between species or species. You can pronounce that either way. Okay, that means different types of animals that can reproduce with each other. Let's talk about an example here. The H1N1 virus, for instance, causes swine flu, which humans can catch from pigs. Swine is a word that refers to pigs, and so swine flu basically means some kind of sickness that you can get. 
from exposure to pigs.、Hmm, there you go. So the H one N one virus causes swine flu, i.e., humans get it or can get it from pigs. How about that? And there's more. The same situation goes for or applies to SARS CoV two. The virus behind the recent COVID nineteen outbreak. Okay, so there you go. It turns out that this novel coronavirus might just come from other animals. How about that? And many experts believe COVID nineteen might have begun in a seafood wholesale market that also sold live wild animals. Of course,、uh, they're still debating where this virus has come from. Just like the Spanish flu back in nineteen eighteen, was it? They still don't really know where it came from. We may never know where COVID nineteen actually started, but a lot of people think that it. Probably began, or maybe began, in a seafood market, or more specifically, a wholesale market. A wholesale, of course, is、uh, when they sell large quantities of things without a middleman. There you go. Like、uh, very often, wholesalers they sell things to businesses and companies and stuff like that, and then those companies in turn sell stuff to the little guys, consumers like you and me. That being said, there are stores like Costco. You can call Costco a wholesale grocery store type of deal, where they actually sell wholesale stuff. To regular consumers, just like me and you. All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't worry, don't fret. The Chinese teacher is waiting in the wings. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, I'm Hanny. We're going to look at today's lesson. The first sentence of the lesson starts with some viruses are deadly, others are harmless. 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 Some viruses are Others 怎么样？怎么样 ？Still others 怎么样？怎么样？像课文第三部分，他提到病毒传播的方式取决于他们的类型。他是不是就写到 ：Some travel in the mist， 怎么样？怎么样 ？Others are carried by mosquitoes or birds. Still others can jump between species. 这样的方式，他就去列举了三种病毒的传播方式。好，那么课文第二部分有提到说，现今科学家不认为病毒是活的。那个原因是 ，viruses don't have cells, nor can they turn food into energy. 病毒没有细胞，也无法将食物转换成能量。好，这边他用 nor 来附和前面的否定陈述来表达也不怎么样。那我们就来学习以 nor 或是 neither 表达否定附和的用法。以 nor 或是 neither 开头的子句呢，我们必须把助动词或 be 动词移到主词前面来形成倒装。那个句型会写作 nor 或是 neither 加上助动词或 be 动词。加主词，那这个用法呢？它必须接在否定陈述后面。例如 ，Jane wasn't invited to the party, nor was her sister. Jane 没有受邀参加派对，她的姐姐也没有。好，我们再造个例句。Nick didn't have breakfast, neither did I. 
Nick 没有吃早餐，我也没吃。那这边要提醒同学们，我们在使用 nor 或是 neither 在表达否定负荷的时候，有几个重点要注意。第一个 ，neither 和 nor 本身就带有否定意思喽，所以你后面不要加 not， 这样就可以表达出也不的语义，所以不要加 not。第二个重点是 ，nor 它是连接词，所以通常会用逗号把它跟前面的句子隔开。可是有时候你有可能会看到 nor 前面加上连接词 and 或是 but。至于 neither， 一般是把它当做副词，我们会用连接词或分号把它跟前面句子隔开。像刚刚我们例句不是讲到说 Nick 没吃早餐，我也没吃，这个我也没吃，我们可以用逗号 nor did I， 或是用分号。Neither did I. 或是用逗号 and neither did I 等等不同方式去表达。好，那么以上今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Virus. The chickenpox virus causes people to break out in a rash all over their body. Deadly. You can see one of the world's deadliest snakes at this zoo. Objective. The textbook tries to present an objective view on how the historical events happened. Reproduce. Plants reproduce through pollination, which enables the production of seeds. Sneeze. I'm allergic to cats, so I'll start to sneeze if one comes around. Transmit. Doctors believe the disease was transmitted to the patient through the water supply. Wholesale. Rita usually buys her groceries from a wholesale store because she thinks it's a better value. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next time. time.